So in this video, we are going to discuss about the validity of the given argument. So the argument is that if I study, then I will pass. So I'm writing here P implies Q. The second is if I do not go to movie, then I will study. The third is I failed and conclusion is I went to a movie. So I went to a movie. I'm denoting it by R. So here if I want to write the second thing, if I do not go for a movie, I'm going to write here negation R implies then I will study. I will study is denoted by P. The third is I failed. I failed means it is the negation of Q that is I will not pass. So here I have negation Q and the conclusion of this is that I went to a movie which is R. So let us check whether this argument is a valid argument or not. So when I consider the left hand side, let me write the left hand side. So P implies Q. Then negation R implies P and negation Q. OK, now I have to somehow adjust this. Uh, these things over here. So what I will do is I will take the contrapositive of the first statement when I take the contrapositive of this. What am I going to get contrapositive of this is negation Q implies negation P. Then negation R implies P is as it is and negation Q also I'm going to keep it as it is right now when I look at the first and the last one, I see that negation Q is also there and negation Q implies negation P is also there. So here for these two, I can apply. Modus ponens here, so by modus ponens what will happen? I will get it as negation P. OK, negation Q with negation Q and uh, negation Q implies negation P that will get this and the say this will remain as it is negation R implies P is as it is. And when I take the contraposition of this, when I take the contrapositive of this particular statement, OK, I'm going to get negation P as it is and this will become negation P implies R. OK, so that will become negation P implies R. So negation P is as it is and negation P implies R. And therefore now again by modus ponens, I'm going to get the output as what I'm going to get it as the conclusion is R. OK, and I think this, this is what we exactly wanted. We wanted R as the output. So I went to a movie is correct. So yes, so this argument is actually a is actually a valid argument. OK, now let us move to the next problem directly without having any situation. So I have to show that negation P or Q. Negation Q and negation of Q and negation R with negation R will give you negation P. So this is what I have to prove now. OK, so firstly what we will do is we will apply your De Morgan's law directly so that that will become simple. So negation P or Q will be kept as it is by De Morgan's law. It is negation Q or negation of negation R negation of negation R is R with negation R. I hope all of us know what is De Morgan's law. So negation of A and B is equivalent to negation A or negation B. This is what I have applied. So here I have applied De Morgan's law. OK, now uh, from look, if you look at these two together. You can uh, simply see that negation P or Q and negation Q or R. You see a Q is here and negation Q is here. So somehow in some sense they will cancel. And that law or that rule is called resolution. So by resolution, the Q and the minus Q. Cancel each other. So roughly and what am I left with? I'm left with only uh, negation. P. Or R. 
so this and this has gone away so i should not do this cancellation actually still in in some sense they will go away and i have negation p or r okay and negation p or r i can write it as what i can write it as p implies r and here i have a negation r because i know that a implies b is equivalent to what negation a or b so this is what i have used and if i take the contra positive of the first one and take the contra positive of this i'll get negation r implies negation p with a negation r and i have a negation r negation r implies negation p so this suggests me that this is looking like a like modus ponens so by modus ponens i can clearly say that the conclusion is negation p and this is what actually we were looking for right so this is what negation p was expected so yes the we have proved that the argument is correct okay uh, if i move to the next one you'll we'll see that negation i have to show that negation of a and negation b with negation b or d with negation d will give you negation a now clearly i'm going to use here immediately de morgan's law because it's a bracket and an operator inside so by de morgan's law what am i going to get i'm going to get it as negation a or negation of negation b will be b then i have a negation b or d and i have a negation d with me again i see that b and the negation b uh, are together and there are two disjunctions together so this again suggests me that d b and minus b will cancel in some sense which is actually called as what which is actually called as resolution and i can write it as equal into negation a or d with a negation d there and again negation a or d can be written as a implies d and this is negation d and by contraposition this will become negation d implies negation a with negation d and therefore by modus ponens i'm um, concluding that the answer is negation a so even that is correct so this is also done the next one is p implies negation q r implies q with r is negation p so i have to show that this is correct so how will i start i will say that let us convert uh, let us look at the second and the third person here if you look at the second and third person here clearly so it will be p implies negation q and here i have i can apply modus ponens so r with r implies q is going to give me simply q okay again i'm thinking of using a modus ponens here but I, this is not looking in the form of modus ponens so let me take the contrapositive of that first thing and take the contrapositive of the first thing i'm going to get q implies negation p with a q and q and q implies negation p by modus ponens i'm going to get it as what i'm going to get it as negation p so this is also what was expected and therefore the given argument is a valid argument okay now let us go to a slightly complicated question so r or s implies t t implies w and negation w and my conclusion should be negation r so i have to show this thing is correct okay so once i write this uh, if i pay attention between the second and the third sorry first and second i'm sorry first if i pay attention at the first and second okay you clearly see that this is the first person implying second and second implying the third so here i can clearly use hypothetical syllogism so when i use hypothetical syllogism what am i going to get i'm going to get that the first implies the third so r 
or s implies w so t is out of the picture and i have a negation w over here right so if i take the contrapositive of the first one it will be equivalent to w negation w implies negation of r or s with a negation w as it is and by de morgan's law so what is the negation of r or s Neg it is negation w implies negation r and negation s with a negation w as it is okay and uh, now this actually looks like what this actually looks like like modus ponens right negation w with a negation w implying something so by modus ponens the conclusion of modus ponens is that negation r and negation s okay i'm repeating why is this modus ponens this is something comma something implying the other thing so this is like modus one p and p implies q so the output is what the result is q so this is what is negation r and negation s okay and this by simplification i know what is simplification simplification says that you can if you have a or b if you have a or a and b then you can either write a or you can write b whatever is convenient to you so by simplification i can write it as negation r also by simplification i can write it as negation s also but i'm going to write negation r because that is what is expected so that is what is asked us so negation r so even if it had been a negation s here still the argument is correct if it had been a negation r still it is correct so the argument is again a valid argument and hence we have proved it okay so this is how you show the argument is valid